All right, all right. So what can we take away from that shit show we call the presidential debate? Besides the fact that we're one chair toss away from watching the Love & Hip Hop reunion episode, somebody online called it the white versus. It's about right. The insults and interruptions were so bad that the commission of presidential debates announced that they will be making format changes for the next two. Let's be honest. These debates have never really been a good platform to go in depth about any legitimate plans for the future, no matter what the topic. These are more so a test to see which candidate is more poised, stronger, more charismatic. But what we actually saw was a bully and another man who struggled a bit to get his points across. I think in general, both sides, and more importantly, the American people, would be better served with an open-ended discussion platform where the candidates can clearly state what their goals are for each talking point. But since that isn't the world we live in, let's see if I can help decipher what was actually said so we can see where our presidential candidates stand. For example, climate change is an extremely important topic right now. In 2020, the state of California has seen over 8,000 wildfires and almost 4 million acres burned. That's bigger than the entire state of Connecticut. Our president believes that we need forest management to help avoid cigarette butts setting off large fires. I don't know how much cigarette butts are impacting climate change, but if that was the case, Smokey the Bear wouldn't win a Nobel Peace Prize. What we need are drastic changes to help shift mother nature. So what about Biden? His infrastructure plan for renewable energy will create $2 trillion worth of jobs and will weatherize 4 million buildings, cutting down electricity bills and pollution. His plan is to completely eliminate emissions by the year 2050, which is important because if not, all of New York will need swim lessons. On the healthcare side, Trump did not have a clear, comprehensive plan to replace Obamacare. He did, however, outline his plans to cut prescription drug prices by 80 to 90% to attract international buyers. On this topic, Biden was baited by Trump to respond to questions about how close he was in opposed to Bernie Sanders. But within the antics, he managed to defend the 23 million Americans that would lose their health insurance if Obamacare was removed. Now, the most controversial of all these topics, for us at least, is the topic of law and order. And I think this really showed us the difference between each candidate. At the end of the day, every American wants to be treated right. Our current law and order procedures which get instigated by Trump, do not reflect or respect the people that are peacefully protesting in these streets against police brutality and systemic racism. Now his point about the top 10 most dangerous cities in America being ran by Democrats, is true. But deploying the National Guards is a reactionary response to the effects of crime. But it doesn't fix the root cause of why people in these cities are committed crimes in the first place. Fix the cause, and the effects would naturally take care of themselves. The worst part about the debate, in my opinion, was Trump refusing to denounce white supremacy and even told the white nationalist group, the Proud Boys, to stand back and stand by. They wasted no time to adopt his words as a new slogan and even took to Instagram to share their new logo. So who are the Proud Boys? The Proud Boys are a far-right, neo-fascist group that has repeatedly used violence to express their hurtful intentions at Black Lives Matter demonstrations. They promote misogynistic, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, and anti-immigrant views. Think of them as prejudiced street bodyguards who will go to extremes to make their presence known. These guys advocate for more guns and closed borders. The hate group is led by Afro-Cubano Enrique Tadio of Miami. But that's not the biggest surprise. The Proud Boys was founded by Vice Media co-founder Gavin McInnes. Currently, they have a membership of 22,000 Proud Boys with chapters all across the states. I got a notification last night that Amazon removed Proud Boys merchandise from their site. It's even crazy that their movement has merchandise. Hopefully, these new debate rules make it easier to actually hear what their candidates' plans actually are. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Jason. Stay tuned to Revolt Black News.